Hello, I'm Seema and welcome to part 8 of the chapter Electrochemistry. The topic of this video is Electrochemical Cell and Gibbs Energy of Reaction. We have now understood what electrochemical cell is and we have derived uh, uh, the formula for E cell and how E0 cell at equilibrium is it related to K. After having studied all that, let us now talk of free energy. We know that Gibbs free energy or delta Rg as we call it. This is the energy that is available to do work. And when is it that the amount of work that is done by a system would be maximum? The work done by a system would be maximum when or the amount of work available for doing work would be maximum when all of the free energy is used. And how do you calculate free energy for an electrochemical cell? For an electrochemical reaction, the amount of the electrical work done in one second would be equal to the electric potential multiplied by the total charge passed. The electric potential and how much the total charge was it that was passed. The product between these two will give you the electrical work done. And the maximum amount of work will be done when all of this will be used up to do work. That is, when all of it will be used up. Whenever we say thermodynamically, when energy is used up, we use the convention negative. We use a negative sign for it. So when would maximum work be done? When delta G, whatever its value is, is being consumed. So there's a negative sign here. To obtain maximum work done from the galvanic cell, the charge has to be passed reversibly. And this reversible work done by the system will be equal to the decrease in Gibbs energy and that decrease is shown by the negative and it will be shown by the decrease in Gibbs energy. Now how do we calculate the EMF that is the potential and the charge? We know the electric potential is the potential difference that is it is E cell and charge is equal to NF where N is the number of moles or uh, it would be the number of uh, electrons that are being transferred and F is Faraday's constant as you already know. So delta Rg is equal to minus NFE. Remember till now I am not, I'm not talking of the state of equilibrium. We are just talking when the reaction is going on. So delta Rg is minus NFE. This is the maximum amount of work that can be done. As we know that thermodynamic quantities can be extensive and intensive. An extensive quantity is one that depends on the quantity of the substance. And an intensive property is one that does not depend on the quantity of the substance taken. Therefore, the E cell is intensive while the uh, charge that is NF is extensive, which means it depends on the number of moles or the number of electrons that are being transferred. As a result of which here, delta Rg, it also becomes extensive because it depends on the number of moles. For the Daniel cell or for the galvanic cell, that is zinc plus copper ions, they give you zinc ions and copper. If you have to calculate delta Rg for this reaction, it would be equal to, value of N for this reaction would be 2 and F is Faraday's constant and the E cell. But if we change the stoichiometry of the reaction, and we write this entire equation as 2Zn plus 2Cu2 positive will give you 2Zn2 positive and 2Cu solid. Then the value of delta Rg would change and it would be equal to minus 4 <coughs> Fe cell, which means that this would be extensive. The value of delta G is changing depending on the number of moles and that is what an extensive property is. Having understood this, let us now move ahead. If the concentration of the reacting species is unity, now let us say that the concentrations of all reacting species is one, that is one, it's or the molarity of both the zinc and the copper ions in the solutions is one. They are one molar solutions. Then E cell becomes equal to E naught cell, right? So E cell becomes, it, it is the standard electrode potential now. So since it is the standard EMF of the cell, it would be E cell is equal to E naught cell. Therefore, 
the value of delta rg naught now this is under standard condition so the standard free energy change delta rg naught will be equal to minus f e naught cell faraday's constant remains constant and number of moles depends on the stoichiometry of the reaction therefore e cell would be substituted with e naught cell and now you would get the standard free energy change thus from delta rg naught you can calculate the e naught cell and vice versa. From E0 cell, you can calculate the delta Rg0, that is the free energy, can be calculated from E0 cell and the, uh, the standard free energy and the standard EMF can be calculated from the standard free energy. Now there is a little attention that you have to give here to the values, to the, whether these values are positive or negative. Do you remember when we discussed the standard electrode potential, I told you that when we write conventionally, when we write down a cell, we write what is E cell? E cell is E right minus E left, where R right is the cathode and left is the anode. And why by convention have we written this? Why have we chosen this difference to be, the potential difference to be like this? So that for a spontaneous reaction, you always get the value of E cell to be positive. We want the EMF of the cell to be positive. And since an electrochemical cell is a spontaneous reaction that is occurring, it is occurring on its own through an external circuit. Therefore, we uh, on purpose we made the convention so that E0 cell for a spontaneous reaction should always be positive. In other words, E0 cell for a non-spontaneous reaction would be negative. Understanding the spontaneity of reactions and remembering thermodynamics that we did last year, if you remember, in the case of delta G, that is free energy, for a spontaneous process, delta G should be negative. And for a non-spontaneous process, delta G should be positive. So we can, if E0 cell is negative, it means the reaction is non-spontaneous. If E0 cell is negative, we notice when delta RG should be positive for a reaction to be non-spontaneous. So if E0 cell is negative, it means the process is non-spontaneous and the convention should be correct so that the value, its value in delta G should also be, be positive if it is non-spontaneous. Delta G on the whole should be positive. If E0 cell is negative, then if you look at this formula, you will notice if E0 cell is negative, then this is a negative value and there is a negative here. Negative into negative will become positive and delta G automatically will become positive, which is an indication that the reaction is non-spontaneous. So that is why they are all quantities that are interrelated. And that is why by convention, when we choose a positive or a negative, we do that with all these properties in mind. So that when you, come, when you combine these quantities, the values that you get should conventionally be correct too. So their signs should be right. So that is why we say that when E0 cell is positive, it means the reaction uh, is negative. It means the reaction is non-spontaneous. In such a condition, delta G would be positive, which proves that yes, it is non-spontaneous. On the other hand, if E0 cell was positive, now positive into negative would be a negative value. So whatever be the value here, it is, if it's a positive value, when you multiply it by a negative value, you will ultimately get a negative value, which shows that delta RG is negative, which indicates the reaction is spontaneous. And E0 cell positive also shows that the reaction is spontaneous. So this confirms it. So delta G value you will obtain, which would be negative, and therefore you will say that the reaction is spontaneous. Let us now find out the relationship between delta G and Kc, that is the equilibrium constant. We have calculated here that delta Rg negative is equal to Nf E0 cell. Now assume these are under standard conditions. But now assume that the reaction is at equilibrium. When the reaction is at equilibrium, E cell becomes equal to zero. When E cell becomes equal to zero, E cell is equal to E naught cell minus RT upon NF ln Kc. Where what is Kc? Kc is equilibrium constant if this is the reaction. Then the concentrations of the products divided by concentrations of the reactants would give you Kc. So, you get E cell is equal to zero, which is equal to E naught cell minus RT upon, LNF, uh, uh, upon NF 
ln kc. And if you rearrange this, take this to be one equation, then E0 cell, and ignore this because this is zero, E0 cell becomes equal to RT upon NF ln kc. Now, we, this is E0 cell, and in this equation, let us substitute the value of this E0 cell. If we substitute the value of this E0 cell, we will get delta RG0 will become equal to NF into NF into E0 cell. E0 cell is RT upon NF ln KC. So NF and NF will get cancelled. You will get delta RG0 is equal to minus RT ln KC. So this is how you relate free energy to equilibrium constant KC. Let us now come back to the signs of delta G. When a reaction is spontaneous or non-spontaneous, what happens? If delta G is positive, it means the reaction is non-spontaneous. If a reaction is non-spontaneous, tell me what would happen to uh, Kc? What would the value of Kc be like? If a reaction is non-spontaneous, it means it is not happily forming the products. Therefore, the concentration of the products would be very low and the concentration of reactants would be very high. Now, equilibrium constant is the concentration of products divided by concentration of reactants. So, if the concentration of products is very low and the concentration of reactants is high, the value of Kc would be less than 1. If both are equal, then the value is 1. But since reactants are less and products are more, sorry, since reactants are more and products are less, the products are on top and reactants are in the bottom and reactants are very large in amount. Therefore, the value of Kc, the upper, the numerator is less and denominator is more. Therefore, the value of Kc would be less than 1. And in this case, the reactants would predominate, which means the concentration of the reactants would be more than the concentration of the products. If delta G is equal to 0, then it means that value of Kc should be equal to 1. When would delta G be equal to 0? When the value of Kc is 1, at that time, delta G would become equal to 0. And it would say it would be zero. It means that at this point, at this uh, state, the reaction is in equilibrium. If the value of delta G is negative, if the value of delta G is negative, it means that the concentration of the products, it's a spontaneous process. Since it is spontaneous, the concentration of products is very high. Since products are the numerator, the numerator has a high value and the denominator is far lesser. Therefore, the value of Kc would be greater than 1. The reaction is spontaneous, and which means that the products would predominate, which means that there are more products, the quantity of products is more in comparison to the quantity of reactants. So this is how we relate uh, the electrochemical cell to Gibbs free energy and how we relate the EMF of the cell to uh, the, what, uh, the equilibrium constant and how we relate both delta G and equilibrium constant based on electrochemical reactions. So with this, I'll wind up this video. In the next video, I'll solve a couple of numerical problems based on this and then we'll move ahead with our chapter. If you found this video helpful, Give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends and please keep returning for more videos on chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye bye for now.